met friends. I hope everybody's having a fantastic Monday. Some people joining us slowly. We are live. It's magical. Not gonna lie, I had a pretty fun day at work today. <laughs> Played with a really nice serger. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit about it today. I've got some good announcements for you. We're streaming both Facebook and YouTube Live. So welcome those of you joining us from YouTube. Welcome those from Facebook. If you're not on the other platform, by all means, follow us on both. You might find you like live videos better on YouTube than Facebook. Whatever the case is, it's all good. We'd love to have you join us on both. Um, we have just over 900 subscribers on YouTube, so thank you to everybody who's hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Uh, if you want more videos from us, we're going to keep making them anyway. Uh, but if you want to be notified about them, hit the subscribe button. That is the best way to find out when we're filming. And then YouTube will ding at you and say, we're live! And same thing on Facebook. If you hit that follow button on our page, uh, you'll get notified when we're live. So that would be great. Um, I'm going to do a few announcements and then, and then we're going to play, um, with, with our new floor model toy. Um, we've got some of these new sergers on pre-order for customers. So as soon as those orders are here, we will let you guys know. Um, but for now, uh, we have ours. <laughs> so you're welcome to come drive it before, before you decide if it's going to be something you want to add to your sewing room. So far, I think it should be something that I add to my sewing room. So I'll put it on my Christmas wish list. Maybe my birthday list. Maybe both. We'll see. Um, so first things first, let me... I'm just going to pop us into... Um, onto our web page. This takes you where I want it to be. Did that not go where I thought it would go? Hmm. It went to nowhere. Oh, screen. Sorry, you guys get that screen for a second. I'm hoping this is working because now I can't see the comments and I can't see you guys at all. Um, we would love to invite you to check out our web store. So we have an extensive online store, a big, big store in store. Um, but this thing right here, that lovely little banner ad, uh, that should be flashing in front of your face if, if I think the internet's working the way it should be. Is the internet working the way it should be? I don't know if they can see this. I don't think so. Oh. Um, let me see. We'll let, we'll let my technical support come help me. Oh. Okay. Well, that kind of is what we're going for. Yeah? <laughs> that one right there. Yeah. Yes. There we go. Oh, there we go. Thanks for saving me. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That's what, <laughs> That's what we're looking for. Um, our first, our first banner on that banner ad. Um, if you shop online all summer long and spend more than fifty dollars before tax and shipping, you will be entered to win a sewing machine at the end of the summer. So there's. Uh, a little bit of fine print on that. Unfortunately, we can't do this giveaway into Quebec um, because giveaway laws there are far too complicated. Um, but yeah, spend money online and then you have a chance to win weekly prize draws and the grand prize of the sewing machine at the end of the summer. So we're going to do our first weekly draw based on the sales from June 1st through June 7th. So the end of the end of tonight, uh, midnight mountain daylight time, which is what we're running in here in Alberta. Um, any orders uh, from that first week we'll get in the first draw for uh, Friday. We'll do the draw on Friday. So you have you have all evening to figure out what fancy things you might like. That might include uh, brother accessories for 10% off. Um, there's some Bernina things on sale on the web store. So you might you might save on luggage or hoops with Bernina. Um, you might stock up on fabric or thread. And the great news is if you uh, win the weekly draw, your name is still in the hat for the grand prize of the sewing machine at the end of the summer. And you can shop as many times as you want. So if you need stuff every week, you can 
be entered for every weekly draw um, if you qualify and you can have your name in the hat lots of times for a sewing machine at the end of the summer which I think is pretty great um, so when you're poking around on our website if you're looking for something specific you can search by category search through books and magazines we have hundreds of titles um, hundreds of things in stock. Uh, you can search fabric by the meter, fabric pre-cuts. This is where all those beautiful fat quarter bundles that Dawn makes, um, some specific fabric bundles for patterns, uh, panels will be in this. Uh, so if you watch Sandy's uh, panel, panel puns and panel songs, the, those two days on Facebook Live, um, this is where the panels are hiding online. And we also have kits. So if you just need a project that's all beautifully coordinated and ready to go, uh, lots of these kits are here and lots of them could be remade. So if you see something you like and we're sold out, there's a chance we could remake it depending on what's in it. Uh, but you could reach out to us on at orderdesk at mysewingroom.ca for that. So there's patterns, garment patterns, quilting patterns, craft other stuff. There's all sorts of good stuff there. Uh, quilting and supplies and accessories. If you need batting to go with your quilt that you're making, maybe you need a package batting. Maybe you need batting off the roll. We have both those things. What else have we got here? Notions. Notions is a giant category of things. So sewing tools and accessories. Um, you'll find things like uh, rotary cutters in there. Oh, those Uber lights. Nice. Oh, maybe we'll only find Uber lights in that category. Maybe I'm wrong about the categories here. General notions. This is where you'll find all sorts of goodies. All sorts of crazy things. There's seam rippers here. There's stilettos. There's frames. There's purse clasps. There's all sorts of good stuff. Um, if you need thread, like I said, thread is the bread and butter of us sewing fabric together. So uh, you have hundreds of options. <laughs> Thousands of options. We have a lot of thread. Um, we posted a video on YouTube and Facebook last week, a little store tour, so that will give you a sense of how much thread we actually have here in store. If you're looking for sewing machines and accessories, uh, we carry Burnett, Bernina, Brother, Handy Quilter, uh, Titans. We have a whole bunch of uh, gently used machines that have all been serviced, so you can link through to those. So all those brother things that are on sale right now, including scan and cut accessories and brother feed in accessories, uh, you'll find them there with their sale price for the summer. Uh, save 10% on all those goodies. Our Bernina machines and accessories, feed in accessories. There's lots of stuff in here. You'll be able to track down um, those things from the flyer. Uh, if you search directly for them. So luggage and uh, embroidery frames or hoops will get you the, to those things. So that's some of the stuff happening kind of in the web store. Feel free to poke around. There's lots of goodies in there. Um, our store has the odd item that is not here anymore, so we do apologize. Inventory on this much product is a massive job. The other thing I want to show you guys is the uh, classes and stuff coming up because we've announced a few over the last uh, couple weeks. They're up on the calendar and we'd like to give you all the information before before you get too excited. Um, so we had Embroider on Anything with Woven Fabric this afternoon with Adrian. Tomorrow is our ninth out of ten classes for the Dream Big. So if you missed this series of classes, they've all been recorded. You can still sign up and watch the recorded version of this class. Uh, coming up Friday, Anne is teaching machine stitch binding. So with decorative stitches. So really fancy stuff. Uh, Anne is a binding master. So if you don't like putting binding on your quilts, you should come to this lecture demo. It's $15 for the Zoom link. You'll get a handout and you can make your binding as spectacular as hers are. Um, really, they're, they're out of this world and they, they don't compare to anything else. They're great. Um, I'm teaching quilting with your embroidery machine. So how do you set up to quilt a quilt sandwich? Because it's not like regular embroidery. You don't have stabilizer. You just have a quilt top batting and backing. 
So how do you manage that? How do you get your uh, designs to line up and be a continuous design across the edge of your fabric? So an edge to edge design. Coming up next Monday, squeeze the day with OSD Stitch Party. We're going to talk about placement and getting perfect placement of all those lovely little lemon embroideries all the way around that great big circle and then how to deal with that great big circle to use it as a tabletop or how to bind it. We'll talk about that in that class. The really big thing coming up next week is Quilt Canada. So Quilt Canada is uh, generally an in-person uh, quilt show, uh, biggest in Canada. It, there's a juried quilt show, so those really spectacular artist level quilters submit quilts for judging. Uh, regular people can just show off quilts as far as I know. Uh, but we're, we have a vendor booth, a virtual vendor booth, because again, we're not allowed to go anywhere just yet, <laughs> but we can, we can do a virtual booth. So we've got four days of programming uh, scheduled out. We've extended our studio so we can do multiple demos in a single day. And it'll be kind of like Facebook and YouTube live um, all day long for four days straight, which sounds like chaos, but it's going to be really fun. And then if you're not signed up for Aunt Annie's Mystery Quilt or the Bernina Project class, or the Bernina software class uh, coming up at the end of the week, we will have a way to sneak you into uh, those classes as kind of like a, an audit and uh, where you can where you can peek in and see what see what our classes actually look like um, through the CQA through the Quilt Canada website. So you'll, you will need to register for Quilt Canada on their website. And then coming up end of closer to the end of the month. Um, talked to Anna into doing an applique class. So Anne is a blanket stitch and applique master. She's so good at it. And she's got some amazing tips. So we're doing the pineapple gnome applique class, which you'll be able to choose from a tea towel kit or a wall hanging kit. And that's included in your class fee. And then the class runs two Wednesdays from one to four. It will be recorded so that you can watch it later if Wednesday afternoons don't work for you to attend a class. So those are coming up. Embroider on Anything continues uh, each Monday until the end of the month. So embroider on knits. Embroider on napped fabrics. That would be like towels or velvet. Um, embroider on sheer fabrics. So mesh, maybe organza. Those are the things that Adrian will be talking about in there. And right at the end of the month, well, last Friday of the month, uh, Kimberbell Ellicart, our last... Uh, round from our book two series. So this is the dealer exclusives program. Uh, we've got Sweet Feet, which are really fun. Uh, there's embroidery, they stand up, there's really cool tubes that you can fill with candy to shove inside those gym shoes. And then we're getting started on Halloween embroidery. So how many pumpkins and how many spiders do you need to make to have one for every little gift bag of treats you hand out at Halloween? You've got time to get started now. So both those classes, uh, fifteen dollars each. You have to drop a USB stick here off. Drop a USB stick at the store uh, to get those files. That's the licensing on that program. And then coming up into July, I'm going to talk about July right now because you might be making plans to do other things. But you should you should come hang out with us. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we've got our Kimberbell Welcome Home. Class. This is a Kimberbell event designed with uh, the brother Luminaire and Luminaire 2 uh, features and we are looking to fill this with, with Luminaire owners. If we don't fill it with Luminaire owners, we will open it up to other people um, closer to the event. So $199 will get you all the instructions, all the files, the stabilizer for those super cute little projects. If you click onto this when you're browsing the website, uh, oh, no, it's on YouTube. We, we've got the ad video for this up on YouTube as well. So that's awesome. And then end of end of July, we've got Day at the Fair. Another Kimberbell event. Um, we put it out to poll, and this is the one that, that the masses picked. And we'll find a date for another Summer Nights event down the road. But Day at the Fair, really super cute projects, and you can join us virtually for that. And then our third series of Kimberbell a la carte, our dealer, dealer exclusives volume three, will be starting at the end of July and running until January. So those are the things coming up uh, right away and that you might want to plunk into your calendar so you're available. I'm going to 
figure out how to go back to me. There! I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I'm back. <laughs> okay. Yeah! You guys are in the right place for the surgery demo. Sorry, I got excited doing other things for a minute. So, um... I have the Bernina L890 surgery in front of me. I'm done most of my announcements, as far as I recall. Um, I'm done the announcements that I was super concerned about making. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a little tour. Uh, we did film some more content on the surgery earlier today, so that'll get posted up on YouTube over the next couple days. Um, as Tyler gets it cut and edited, um, we filmed it super high quality, so it should be easy to see all the fancy things. Um, that we've got on the go. So let's just switch gears here. Throw you over to this this camera. So the L890 does have a digital interface, which is a little bit unusual on a searcher. Because mostly they're a very mechanical machine where you still have to make... Um, we still have to make a whole bunch of physical adjustments to make things happen on here. But the last thing I did was a four-thread surge. So I've got a lovely four-thread surge right there. Uh, this is going to help me in a moment. We're going to talk cover stitching today because I did a little bit of surging last week on the L850, which is a serger only. So, And I just thought it was really neat how seamlessly this machine will let you know what you need to change to go from one thing to another. So we're going to just move slowly through a couple things. Um, I'll do my best to get some good shots for you guys, um, but I don't have my cameraman next to me, so bear with me. <laughs> we'll, we'll go from there. So on screen, um, we've got the tensions for the four threads being used. So yellow is our left needle, green is our right needle, blue is our upper looper, red is our lower looper. Right now our needles are stopping in the up position. Our stitch length is set at 2.5, which is quite normal for a serger stitch. And our differential is at 1, which is just fine for lots of things. We can show the stitch in single color or in full color. So this will be the front of our stitch down where the blue is on top. And where it's folded over on that image, that will be the back of your fabric. So what the stitch looks like from the back. You're able to change the speed. On this machine so the top speed is 1350 stitches a minute when you're just getting comfortable with this machine you might feel that that is way too fast so you're able to slow that down um, I don't mind being a bit of a speed demon so I'm gonna leave my speed alone so from here after we've done a four thread surge um, maybe I'll just do another one real quick for you guys because I've got it threaded and ready to go We've got a tail out the back. So that tail coming out the back, you'll want that started every time you start to surge. And then we've got some really lovely markings on our on our presser foot here. So we're gonna zoom right in, show you what you're looking at on your presser foot. So the markings on your presser foot, the first indent marking is where the blade will be when you're set at six millimeters. Then we have our right needle line for our serger, left needle line for our serger, right needle line for the cover stitch, center needle line for the cover stitch, and left needle line for the cover stitch. So there's five different needle positions on here. Um, most likely if you're just surging, you'll be using the back two further back in the machine. If you're doing a combination stitch, you'll probably have one needle in the front and one needle in the back. If you're doing a true cover stitch, you'll have all your needles in the front part of the needle block. So that's roughly what you're looking at for where your needles are. But to do a four thread surge, really pretty easy. I'm going to throw my cutoff spin back on. I've already got that tail started. Uh, 
if I want to this I don't have a straight piece of fabric right now I have a whole bunch of weird offcuts in the middle of making a t-shirt so I thought that would be a fun way to test drive this machine <laughs> Left needle line, I do want a little bit of fabric trimmed off. And a lovely four thread surge on my knit. I've been hoarding knits at home for quite some time and I need to stop hoarding them and start sewing with them so that I can wear them. <laughs> be much much better for my wardrobe that way so from here I'm pretty happy I've done a four thread surge um I'm on this particular t-shirt that I'm making um, I'm making the Concord t-shirt from Cashmere Ad, actually so I'm making the Concord t-shirt from Cashmere Ad. um might, might be a class coming up soon but I have to make the t-shirt first before I decide if I'm ready to teach it So from there, um, this we're gonna we're gonna pretend we're making a cuff, and that we have to hem our cuff. That's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna switch to cover stitch mode, and I'll show you how easy it is to switch between modes on this machine. Hopefully, my tripod stays stays put. So if I want to change stitches on here, I'm going to use the stitch selection menu. And if you made a bunch of changes that you know you want to save for another project on another day, you can save those to your favorites folder. I don't want to save this. It was just a basic four thread surge. I'm going to hit the X button. And it's going to let us go and pick which type of stitch we want. And on the machine, there's a guided mode and an expert mode. But the guided mode is going to tell you exactly what needs to change to go from where you are to where you want to be which is so, so ridiculously easy. Um, lots of people with dual purpose machines uh, struggle because it's, on some of them, it's a bit of a nightmare switching between the two and you never know if you got it right because it's tricky. So I, oh no, I don't wanna be in that folder. We'll go back a folder. We wanna go into cover stitch. So cover stitches, uh, if you're looking at the clothing that you're wearing today, uh, there's probably cover stitch in your underwear. There's probably cover stitch if you're wearing yoga pants. Uh, your t-shirt hem probably has a cover stitch on it. And normally it looks like two or three straight lines on the front and a crazy mishmash of thread on the back. Or two lines on the front and one line on the back. There's a couple different variations of that. You can do it uh, two thread wide, two thread narrow. There's one other stitch this machine will do is called a chain stitch which is one needle thread and one looper thread. So I'm gonna go over and we'll switch into that stitch 21. So it knows where I was before and it's gonna tell me exactly what I need to do to move into the next stitch. Great. So we're gonna lift our presser foot. That was step one. Scroll to the next step. Unthread the following thread paths. Because I'm switching all the way over, I'm actually going to unthread everything. So I'm going to cut at the spool. So all of those are unthreaded right at the spool. And usually the easiest way to get all these threads out of the machine is to pull the needle threads through. That will release them from the tension. And then you can pull the whole chain stitch very gently out of the machine. So all my thread is out of the machine. I'm going to start completely from scratch on this. Okay, so that was easy. And there's little videos here too. So it shows you what to do for each of these steps. Uh, we're going to change our presser foot. So right now the default foot that comes on the machine is called the C11 change that out and switch to the C13. So little red button on the back of the foot. Drop the foot. We're 
going to switch to the C13, which is just cover stitch. We can drop our foot down and press the button once more to secure it. We're also going to check that our presser foot pressure is adjusted. Mine is at four already, but it's just a little toggle on the top of the machine. You guys didn't see that. That was on the wrong camera. So pressure foot pressure is located on the top of the machine. Really, really good little video right on board the machine. So you don't have to wonder how this is done. So that's under control. We're, next, we're going to move our needles. So my needle screwdriver is hiding in the door. And there's a really lovely needle change tool that comes with your machine. So if you struggle getting your fingers in under here to hold needles, the needle change tool can slide up over the needle. help hold on to it for you as you loosen it. It's because I'm going all the way over to the other needle. I'm going to move these needles. There is two types of needle that ship with the machine. One is a ballpoint, one is not. Otherwise, they are both the same needle type. The needle change tool will help you hold that needle all the way up so you can see it in the little window. Tighten that screw. Moving these to the front needle block. Tighten that screw. Got one more needle squirreled away. And tighten that screw. And I would just go through and tighten all these needle screws. Um, they're very, very tiny and will disappear onto your floor, never to be seen again if you pull them all the way out. It's probably not what so needles are installed. And going back up to our on screen instructions, we can deactivate the knife. There's a switch on the side of the machine. And move it to the disengaged position, which will drop the knife below the stitch plate. And we're going to adjust the cutting width down to five. This makes brings the whole system in as tight as it can, which will allow our change when we change our uh, cover here in a moment to fit. Uh, we're going to attach the needle, the cover stitch insert. So this is on the on the inside door. There's two doors on this machine to get in. So the surging insert um, guides the thread into the cutoff spin and the fabric into the cutoff spin. And the other insert has markings so that you can hem an even distance up on whatever you're hemming with your cover stitch. We'll also need to deactivate the upper looper using the small dial in behind the second door. So turning it to the O position, we'll disengage it. After a hand wheel revolution, it'll park it down in the bottom position. So now that upper looper is out of our way. It's not going to get caught as we stitch. Next on screen. No, oh, we don't need to change anything else on the uh, upper looper converter because it's parked out of the way. Our stitch selection lever needs to be in the O position. That'll fit in seamlessly with the um, cover stitch insert. And then it tells us what items we need threaded. So we need our three needles threaded as well as our cover stitch. Looper. And this is where this machine with air threading is so stinking easy. Um, like ridiculously easy. I'm going to put purple thread in for this. 
because that's the color of the thread guides for that cover stitch. Uh, looper. So there's three loopers in this combination machine. The looper closest to you is the cover stitch looper. And when we want to thread it, we'll turn the dial, the threading dial, to the threading position. And then just rotating the hand wheels will allow the threader tubes to engage. Do a more extensive threading video. The more extensive threading video with the top portion of this threading is all up on YouTube uh, in the next few days. But the important part here is that we're going to leave the tail of thread through that top portion of the machine, following the purple thread guides, and our thread's going to come out of this looper over here. We need to leave about 18 inches of thread. We'll dangle that thread over over the air threading port. And then we're just gonna go toes down on our foot pedal. And that thread starts to suck through. It's gonna come out right here. Just like that, and it's threaded. There was no crazy thread guides that you had to remember to hit or miss. So nice, so easy. I'm loving it. Um, but that's all we need to do for threading the bottom portion of the machine. So that was pretty easy. Now we just have three needles to thread. So I'm going to start with my right cover stitch needle. Make sure your presser foot is up, blow your threading so that your tension discs are open. So for cover stitch, we're following the half moon with the cutout, kind of the rainbow shaped thread guides. So blue is going to be our right needle down along the front, along the right cover stitch needle there, our very center thread guide here. I love using tweezers for this part. Just have a short little tail. Easy to grab the thread and keep, carry on. I'm going to do almost the same thing with the green, following the green thread guides. This will be our center needle. Lastly, our yellow thread is our left needle. And all those separate thread guides help keep these threads from tangling as they go through the machine. So, just like that, uh, all four threads are threaded. We can hit the green check mark, which will remind us to turn the knob, disengage our looper threading, close our doors, and we're ready to get going on doing some cover stitch. So our first run through, let's do a little bit of scrap fabric here. So we can see where these threads are in the stitch, how to disengage everything as you go. Unlike serging, you do need fabric underneath your presser foot when you start stitching. So we're going to start just in from the edge a little bit. And we're going to start just with a couple hand wheel turns to make sure this is all moving smoothly and that our thread isn't caught. We want to leave nice long tails at this point. We'll pull them through and tie them off at the back at the end. And this is just using default tension on screen for this stitch. 
Default settings on everything. Good place to start. Find your knit is rippling a little bit. You might need to um, adjust differently. So, how are you going to get your cover stitch off the machine when you can't serge off the end? That's where the super fancy little uh, locking tool comes in. This is one of the sweetest things I've ever got my hand on. I've had a cover stitch for a little while at home, and this part is always the trickiest. So, to finish this stitch, we're going to lift the foot, lift the needles. We, if the needles were stopping in the down position, we could use the back kick on the foot pedal to raise them up. And then from here, we're grabbing those needle threads on top of the fabric. And pulling off to the side. And out to the back. So pulling those out. If you pull them far enough, you can cut them on... Yeah, you know, using a pair of snips or on the thread cutter on the side of the machine. And then you can gently pull the fabric out backwards and go in and trim the looper thread as well. And there you have a super lovely cover stitch. Um, so the part of the reason cover stitches are so lovely is because they're stretchy. So when you pull your underwear up over your bum, the stitch has a really good recovery in the way that it's built. So if you did this with a regular straight stitch on a sewing machine, you'd have no recovering and you'd pop all your stitches. And that three, this is a four thread cover stitch, um, is just a really tidy little stitch. So the purple thread's on the back, that's your looper thread. And when we're going to finish this seam off, on the end that we started, or that we ended on, all the threads are to the back. So we're just going to tie a little knot, which will secure all those stitches, because we don't want we don't want our looper thread to to pull to freedom and come undone on us. That would make us all very sad after you built a garment, or even played around with test sewing. It's a little knot with all four threads. And you could weave that back through the stitch if you were so inclined. It's a little knot there at the other end here. If you can't tie them off because your needle threads are on the top of your fabric still, you can use that chain tool or your tweezers to pull those threads into the back. And again, just tie them into a little knot to secure them and finish them off. You want to trim these really short instead of weaving them through. I throw a little bit of fray check on there. Just like that. Super tidy from the outside, secured from the inside. We're good to go on that. So the other thing you can do is you might need to do something with this, like shorten your pants or put a new cuff on a t-shirt or cut all the leg seams off your kids' pants because they keep wearing holes in the knees and it's summertime and they need shorts. So, uh, cover stitch is lovely if you're working in the round because uh, you can just overlap those stitches as you go. So, this is a round tube I made earlier. It's going to fit over the free arm cover just fine or over the free arm. And there's all sorts of lovely markings on here. So, if you needed this to sit out here be a one inch hem easy to line up and keep your markings straight there's also a seam guide for the right hand side but i haven't figured out how it goes on yet so we can't use it today that'll be my next thing this is a right hand seam guide it attaches somehow over here Project for tomorrow. Figure out how the seam guide attaches. The downside to doing the video the same day that you open the box. You don't know everything right away. I think 
that one inch mark will be lovely. Couple stitches to get started, make sure it's moving. And then if it's kind of getting stuck like that, we might need to adjust our differential, which is a really easy change on screen. Differential is here. I'm going to go up to 1.5. Or you get the live demo version of Leah getting everything jammed. That's been known to happen as well. Well then, everything jams. Start dealing with our stitches the same way. Out. Release that to the back. Trim our upper thread. Oh, that, that looper tail got caught. It wasn't moving. So if you need to remove a cover stitch seam, undoing the looper thread will release all your needle threads. Unless they're really super jammed. You might need to go and do this a different way. Let's start that again. This time, trim off all the server tail that probably got caught too. This time we have all those threads up, so we'll just manage those as best we can to make sure they're not getting caught on the foot. Already moving smoother. Back to the front, we'll just overlap gently. We can release the same way. Tails are caught. That's not a good thing. Not my prettiest, prettiest attempt. Definitely much easier than trying to do this with a twin needle. So, what happened here? upper looper thread got caught um, as I started stitching and it's tight tension just continued to be a little bit of a problem the whole way through but this is why we test before we get going so my second time doing this all the way around will be much smoother than the first back to another flat piece because I seem way better at flat pieces today
maybe having maybe having a knot in our needle thread some helping what do you know so yeah uh it's a it's a fun machine and and for my first couple stitches here totally impressed totally loving it um they sergers are so much easier than they used to be so if you had a serger 30 years ago um they're they're not the same beasts that they were before they're much much easier to use um, even if you don't have something fancy like air threading all the threading guides are much easier to use than they used to be so really pretty slick um that's what i got for you guys today i hope you had a lovely monday um we do have these on order so if you're wanting one um give us a call we'll we'll get you hooked up with one of our first out of the first couple shipments so i hope you have a great evening be safe be kind be calm and we'll see you guys tomorrow